So with Palestine and Israel at war, this past few weeks have seen many heated debates about the conflict. And over the past few days, a few of them have gone completely viral. And all of them are on our good friend Pierce Morgan's channel. So in this series, you're gonna see some debates that are pro-Palestine, some that are pro-Israel, but all of them are sparking controversy, especially in the comments section. So today's first video sees Pierce Morgan interviewing the Israeli ambassador to the UK. And let me tell you, this video has quadruple dislikes to likes. In a minute, you're gonna find out exactly what went down. And it starts off with the ambassador stating exactly why Israel is doing what it is doing. This is one of those moments in a nation's life that a country cannot carry on without providing the very basic obligation that every country has to its people. We need to protect our children. We are out there in Gaza, not in order to revenge, not in order to punish. I don't agree with any of those I mean, definitions. It is, it is partly that. Though, Let me just it? say why we're doing that. Mm. We're doing that to make sure that my children, my friend's children, mm. and every child in Israel will be protected. After we've seen what happened to our border, after we've seen what those barbaric terrorists from Hamas came in and they be babies' heads. I mean, the fact that those, those small babies, you know, we saw in the Telegraph, wrapped in uh, mm. those bandages. I mean, th this is something that breaks the heart of every parent. And you cannot see that. And the horrific photographs and everything documented by Hamas, the fact they put children together, the fact they wanted to ch people in their homes by putting them on those type of barbaric actions. And, and I'll, I'll tell you more than that. Uh, after identifying, unfortunately, 1,300 Israelis that were brutally the people were recognizing the bodies. They said 80% of the bodies being and our president just exposed a booklet that basically showed that it was part of their, you know, way of action, that they wanted to people. It was part of their terror actions, uh, innocent young women. So after detailing the horrific events that happened back on October 7th, Pierce Morgan is about to ask the ambassador how she feels about the BBC refusing to refer to Hamas as terrorists in their reports. And let's also not be afraid, as the BBC is seemingly afraid to do, to call this what it is, an act of terror. These are terrorists. What do you about feel it. about the BBC refusing to call them terrorists? Um, so I think if the BBC stands for accuracy and if the BBC stands for um, the mm. truth, it's very simple. I mean, this is what terrorism is, mm. and you cannot find any better example no. of terrorism. So I, I really think everyone should call it by its name and its terrorism. And, and I think one more thing we need to, to say uh, at this time, because Israel is now in one of its, uh, I would say this is not an existential threat, mm. but this is a war on existence, mm. because we cannot exist if our children cannot be safe in their homes. So it's no secret that the BBC has received many criticisms about its reporting in recent years, and its decision on how it reported on Hamas has received a lot of backlash. And some people have even accused them of supporting Hamas themselves. And with this, Piers Morgan is about to ask the ambassador his first pressing question. Israel has decided, and people will absolutely understand this, that Hamas has got to be eradicated in the way that ISIS was eradicated. But ISIS was eradicated in a process that also involved a lot of innocent people getting killed on the way. Clearly, in what is coming now in Gaza, a lot of innocent people on the Palestinian side are going to die as well. How many is too many? And I don't have the number. I just talk about this debate about proportionality. I'm struggling to see what is proportionate that meets the scale of what happened last weekend. Let me make that clear. I don't have the answer here. But there's a fine line that Israel is going to tread between doing what it can to get the hostages out, paying back, revenge, retaliation, whatever you want to call it for defense. what has happened. I call it defense. I okay. call it defense. I mean, I, I, whatever you call it, obviously that's part of the motivation too. And ultimately you want to get rid of Hamas, but Hamas are embedded with civilians, we know this. So the civilian toll is going to be very high. And the question for the international community is at what point does the high moral ground, which I think Israel has at the moment, because of the scale of what happened last weekend, at what point could you risk losing that? Piers Morgan's question is a bit complicated, and the way the ambassador answers received a lot of criticism for being overly diplomatic in his tone. So first of all, Israel is a moral country, works according to the international law, and according to the international law, we are allowing all the Palestinians to go to the south area of Gaza in order to make sure they'll be safe, including creating shelters for them with the international community organizations to make sure they will be safe. The only but, but thing- the water, Let me ask you on this, sir. Just 
just, just one second. Let me, let yeah, me yeah. just finish. The only thing that stands as a barrier from those Palestinians mm. to get into a safe place is the fact that Hamas is preventing from its own population to get to a safer place because it doesn't care about its people. He's using international support, not in order to give them, as you said, water and electricity, but actually in order to fire on Israel. And as we speak, you know, everyone is talking about this horrific massacre. But sometimes we forget that fighting from Hamas carries on. As we speak today, parliament being evacuated, the center of Israel being bombarded by, by those rockets. And we keep having over 6,000 rockets just in the last week. So think about it. It needs to have electricity and all those manufacturing. Mm -hmm. What do you think supports that? So it's Hamas basically taking from its own population and using it against but innocent Israelis. I heard, I heard so you. Okay. blame Hamas. I hear you. Blame I hear, Hamas. I hear you. And after this response, Piers Morgan is about to offer a bit of pushback on whether Palestine is suffering from a humanitarian crisis. But I also heard you this morning saying there's no humanitarian crisis here. By any definition of a humanitarian let crisis, me explain that, that okay. is happening. I mean, you may apportion blame to Hamas on your let, side. Let, let me explain I don't this think statement. you can deny there's a humanitarian crisis. Let me explain that. I'm a woman. I'm a mother. Mm. I have a sympathy to any innocent child, any innocent person in the world. We don't want to harm any innocent people. We want to target the militants. We want to target those terrorists. We want to target the facilities, the capabilities. This is what we want to do. And the reason I said that, because at the moment in Gaza, you have supplies of water, you have supplies of food. And unfortunately, wait is, a second, is, some of it being Some abused. say the water has run out in many areas. And I want to explain why. 90% of the water in Gaza are not is not supplied by Israel. This is like a myth. Uh, Gaza, is Israel has just 10% of this. 90% uh, of it is based on their aquifers, and they're doing that by using um, uh, machines. And the machines basically need electricity that are being abused at the moment by Hamas in order to fire my own hometown. I and this, this is what happens. So I understand just, this. just think how irrational it is that the international community, knowing that Hamas started this war, is blaming Israel for what it didn't start it. I'm not blaming Israel. Now, as Piers Morgan takes in the ambassador's point of view, he's about to issue a stark warning in the form of a history lesson regarding America's involvement with Iraq and Afghanistan. I understand the scale of what happened last weekend means that there must be an unprecedented response. Exactly. I think any country in the world that suffered what Israel suffered last weekend would launch an unprecedented response. I understand that. But I also I understand in my modern history that after 9-11, America launched a series of unprecedented responses. It invaded Iraq, which I felt at the time was an illegal invasion. That caused ISIS to grow in huge amounts of power and then many, many people. Uh, Afghanistan was a huge mess and continues to be a mess and is now back in the hands of the Taliban and so on. There's not a lot of evidence that a big invasion of a place like Gaza will do anything other than potentially make the situation worse. That's my concern. So can, can I give you uh, my answer? Life is about choosing between, between alternatives. Uh, if you have a perfect alternative, you would have gone for the perfect alternative. But going back even for British history, I mean, you don't want to go back to American history by attacking Mosul and killing so many civilians. And I, I personally think uh, fighting ISIS is a justified cause mm. because ISIS didn't do any good uh, for, oh, for, for civil civil society. And, and going back to your own history, when you fight Nazi Germany, mm. you knew that there were many, many civilians got attacked from your attacks on mm. German cities. Dresden was a symbol, but you attacked Hamburg, you attacked other cities, and altogether it was over 600,000 civilian Germans that got and was it worth it in order to defeat Nazi Germany? And the answer was yes. Let me ask you uh, this. Let me ask, I don't, I don't, just to, just yeah. to finish, my point is we don't target civilians. We mm. definitely give them an alternative and a place to find a shelter. And we are trying to minimize casualties because our target is just to remove Hamas from our border I understand. in order to have my children to I sleep in peace and quiet in their bed. So as the ambassador shoots back with her own history lesson involving Piers' country, now Piers is about to fire back, not using history, but using cold, hard stats. I understand, but it is also true that nearly three times as many Palestinians have died in the last week than we in the outrage on October the 7th. And then that number is going to go much, so much higher. This is exactly why I think it's unmoral equivalence, because those people mm. got killed in Israel, children, women and men, mm. were brutally targeted and murdered in the most barbaric way. I agree, I agree with no, you. No, no, but the people got caught in a crossfire mm. in Gaza are people we didn't want to kill. Some of them are terrorists. You need to remember that. And we are targeting those mm cruel people that are based in schools, based in hospitals. And according, by the way, to the international law, Israel is allowed to launch a military attack every time there is a place that is puts Israelis in danger, which it is. The facilities of Hamas are based in civilian. So after that slightly heated exchange, Pierce Morgan is about to ask a more personal question in an attempt to get the ambassador to acknowledge a very dark truth. But do you feel, you talked about being a, a mother, a parent. Do you feel on a personal level, genuine sympathy with 
the innocent Palestinians who are getting caught up in Absolutely. this. Absolutely. I mean, my, my thoughts are to every single individual that is caught in a war zone. Now, but, but, but you need to understand, every country has first and foremost responsibility to its own people. So if Israel will fail to defend my children and other people's children, like we've seen those parents that had to, you know, be in a shelter, hearing other, like, I will never forget this video, that you hear parents that hear one of their children get I mean, this is, those are things, those are things that are totally horrific. So when this is the reality, you need to understand there was a, a misconcept of, of the understanding that Hamas can be a target, can live by you. No, this tiger, it, it, it went out of, of the cage and it did what it did. That was just a warm up question. Cause this follow up question from Piers is a question that many people have been wondering exactly what is on the minds of the Israeli government. And the way the ambassador answers just might shock you. How do we get to peace after this? So that's a great question. I think um, you cannot have peace. I mean, th this, again, going back to your history, you cannot uh, have any type of negotiation with this type of mm. barbarism that is based on jihadi ideology. Hamas Charter is calling to annihilation yep. of Israel is. and total destruction. So it, it, it has no political vision. So we need to have, uh, from the other side, we need to have people want to live peacefully with Israel. We've seen the Arab world uh, opens the gate to Israel. We've seen the Abraham Accords. We've seen Saudi wants to uh, normalize with Israel. I believe the future future can be better without terror organizations. And this is why Israel is fighting this war, by the way, for the West as well. This is not just Israel's fight. This is the Western world's fight. Just like you had your attacks in 7-7, the Manchester arena. It's the same type of ideology that attacking innocent people. We need to fight it together. Now, as we close towards the end of this interview, Piers Morgan is about to ask a series of complicated questions that eventually result in complete chaos in the comment section. And after you hear the ambassador's responses, you'll understand exactly why. It is inarguable, finally, that before this attack, the plight of the Palestinian people in Gaza was completely unacceptable. Many will see the control that Israel has wielded in the last week as evidence that it's an unhealthy control over the people of Gaza and indeed potentially of the West Bank as well. My next guest will certainly be arguing that very strongly, that until what they see as the oppression of the Palestinian people is properly dealt that there will always be this kind of, I mean, you can call last weekend what you like, to me it's a disgusting abomination, but there will always be angry people in Palestine wanting to break out of what they see as oppression. What do you say to that? Um, let's just check the facts from 2000. And actually, actually, Gaza was the uh, case study for how the world will look without Israeli control on Palestinian uh, area and territory. 2005, Israel withdraws to the international border and people believe that Gaza will become a Middle East Singapore. And look what happens. So actually, it's the other way around. From 2000 to 2005, Israel doesn't have any settlements, doesn't have any territorial demands from the Palestinians. Instead of turning Gaza to a flourishing city, they took all the international support, and there was massive support, and they took it to, to build this underneath tunnel city, it became a terror city, an evil city. We saw the results and the, its ugly face on last Saturday. But you wouldn't Israel. deny that the living conditions of people in the Gaza Strip, for example, have been completely unacceptable. And Pierce, who should we blame for that? Israel doesn't control the Gaza Strip but since is, 2005. But is, is Israel blameless? I would say that Israel after... It's not two, blameless. I would say Israel... No country in the world is perfect. Mm. But after 2005, you need to blame the effective control of Hamas uh, that abused the population, that kept on using all the international support just for one cause, to harming innocent Israelis, to fire all those rockets that have been fired on our cities for years by years. And this is where every civilized person should stand and to say, we saw the real face of Hamas on Saturday. They are there to kill innocent Jews in their beds. And we need to support Israel in this justified fight because Hamas is bad both to Israelis, but also to Palestinians. So after this video aired, the comment section was extremely enraged. They accused Pierce Morgan of playing softball politics by only asking her easy to answer questions and not really giving any pushback. And they even went so far as to accuse the ambassador of being a complete liar and propagandist. But this was just a spark to the fire for the ultimate debate between Pierce Morgan and the Oxford graduate pro-Palestine Muslim, Mohammed Halib. And their debate caused that video to go viral with 5 million views in less than 24 hours. So stay tuned because it'll be coming real soon.